Good evening, and welcome. Uh, we are talking tonight about our Wheel of the Year workshops, and we wanted to, to just spend a little time going into it because I think, you know, for a lot of people who might not necessarily know what that means or, or why we might um, celebrate and work with those energies. And uh, for others, we might just um, want to know how we go about doing that and, and what exactly those evenings entail. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. So if you are watching live, please feel free to ask any questions that may come up. I love questions and they're always fun to answer. And I will do my best to keep an eye on Oh, I don't know. Wherever I'm supposed to keep an eye on for those things to happen, uh, maybe it's maybe it's right there. No, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> so, the wheel of the year is a term for the eight uh, celebrations or sabbaths uh, that follow the cycle of the sun. So. I mean, you can look at it starting in any place, but it's a wheel, so it doesn't necessarily have a, a beginning or an end. Um, but say if we start at the winter solstice, which is the longest night of the year, so it's when the the sun is at its weakest for wherever we are. Um, you know, in the northern hemisphere, that's in December for us. Um, or the southern hemisphere, it's you know reversed, of course. And so that is. Oh, good. Um, so that starts at the time of, uh, of the, the weakest point of the sun's energy. And then, uh, and that's also the celebration of Yule, which uh, I'm sure most of us have heard and things like, you know, Yuletide carols and Yule logs and things like that. Um, and then we, we follow the uh, the four cardinal points of the sun's progression. So we have the, the winter solstice, the spring equinox, the summer solstice, and the fall or autumnal equinox. I, um, I love to say the word autumnal whenever I can, because that's fun. Um, and then we also have uh, halfway points in between all of those. So there are eight uh, Sabbaths or celebrations in total that we're following throughout the year. And what we're doing is tracking the sun's energy as it builds to full strength in the summer when we reach the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year, and then wanes through um, to the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. And in between these two, the equinoxes are the, the times where it's, where it's in the middle. So it's, it's equal length day and night. So why is it helpful and important to, to be aware of this progression and to work with those energies? Well, it just comes down to being a, a conscious and active participant in the energies of the world and life around you. Because the sun's energy is waxing and waning whether we're aware of it or not. And it's just whether or not we're actually um, participating, whether we're involved. Um, for me, the analogy that comes to mind is, you know, you can be in a boat that's just floating down the river. Uh, it's it's going to go down the river, but who knows what you're going to bump into and crash into along the way. And you have no necessary control over, you know, how you're going about the trip. Whereas if you have a, you know, a rudder in the water, you're not necessarily going to be controlling the flow of the river, but you can use the flow of that river to manage your own progress and keep yourself on a more smooth and even path. So you're not constantly crashing into things or, you know, getting stuck in a, in a bank of brush or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, it just gives us a little bit more active participation in, in life. And, you know, you might say, well, what's the difference? You know, if we're going downstream either way, what does it matter? And it's just a matter of whether, you know, whether we want to be uh, active in the progress of our lives and whether we want to actually, you know, because then if we do get stuck in a place where we're not moving forward, you can, you know, 
shake your fist at the sky all day long and, and say, you know, oh, how did this happen? Or we can be like, oh, well, I was trying to do this at a time when the energy was doing this. So of course it didn't go well. I, I had no, I had no support for what I was trying to do. Um, generally speaking, like with the progression of the sun, um, similarly with the progression of the moon, you know, the, the moon, the new moon, the moon, moon the new moon is a, is a lower time of energy and it's a time to be a little bit more, um, you know, introspective and, and restful. Whereas then the energy of the waxing moon starts to build and that's a good time to start things and, uh, and build energies and cultivate projects and start new things. Then we get to the full moon, which is a time of very high energy. And then after that, it starts to wane, which is a good time to be releasing, letting go, you know, setting down things that we no longer need. So very similarly with the cycle of the sun, when we are in that time of lower energy of the sun, that's the time to be restful. That's, you know, that's usually uh, in the animal kingdom, that's a time of hibernation. You know, that's, that's when they go underground and save their strength because it's not a time of high energy going on in the world, at least not from the sun's point of view. And then as it builds towards spring, that's a good time to, to cultivate. If we look at it from an agricultural standpoint, that would be the time of planting, of sowing the seeds, of, of, of laying the foundations for big things to come. Then we get through the summer, things are, are very high energy. They're, um, you know, things are coming to fruition. It's the, the time of uh, bounty. Uh, and then as we work through the fall, the energy starts to wane, we see it to start to reap the rewards and, and harvest and then start to gather in everything that we have gained over the year so that we have what we need to make it through the winter in that time of low energy. Um, you know, in our, in our modern culture and society, it's very easy to be really disconnected from the cycles of nature. Because, because most of us aren't farmers and we're not planting uh, and, uh, and, and uh, sowing crops and, and harvesting and all of that. So it's, it's really easy to get out of touch with those energies and, and, and find ourselves really you know, trying to swim upstream at times when it's really not uh, helpful to do so. And it can get very frustrating. And you know, maybe we're trying to do something that would be very good for us and is something that's gonna be very beneficial for our lives, but we're doing it at a time when it's going to be significantly harder than if we plan a little bit better, we're aware of that energy and we're able to, to do it at a time that is better, um, better supportive and helpful. What in the world is that Joe? <laughs> um, yes. Don't do push-ups when the sun is low. Maybe. I don't know. Um, so, uh, that's a little bit about why we work with those energies. Um, <laughs> Uh, and and some of the benefits of it and uh, you know many of these celebrations have been around for thousands of years and we actually see it in our more modern day celebrations so you know if you've ever wondered oh there a thumbs up I understand a thumbs up a little better <laughs> um, if we look at our celebrations of things like Easter, you know, if you ever if you ever wondered how we got from uh, Jesus being resurrected to chocolate bunnies and colored eggs. Uh, that's because of these older celebrations that just the, the traditions got integrated into more modern things. So um, Ostara, which is the origin of Easter, which our Ostara ceremony is coming up soon, uh, next week on the 19th, I believe. It's all about spring and fertility and, and planting, um, planting the crops to be able to uh, uh, you know, to have a, a good bountiful harvest and, and, and good healthy crops down the road. So rabbits are symbols of fertility and as are eggs. So that's, you know, we start to make sense of that. Um, and if we look at a lot of our uh, Christmas traditions, uh, a lot of those stem from old Yule and, and solstice uh, traditions because it's all about holding on to the light and, and bringing in and anchoring the light of the sun at the time when its energy is weakest. So the evergreen trees are said to hold the energy of the sun because they stay green all year round. Um, and then, you know, you bring one inside and put the candles on it and, and keep all those lights burning. And a lot of those traditions carry through today in, uh, in a lot of our practices and traditions for Christmas. Um, so that was a little bit of a side note, but 
anyway, I always find it interesting because uh, I, I myself always wondered how we got from uh, from from the, the three days of resurrection um, to chocolate rabbits. I never quite made sense to me, and now I understand. So, uh, so that's some why and how and what. And the the workshops themselves are tend to be fairly simple. We're not trying, you know, we're we're not doing anything crazy. That we're just bringing in and anchoring the energy, and then usually using some meditation and some form of very simple magic to help us harness that energy and use it to help us. So, um, like for the Maybon ceremony, uh, it's a it's a time of balance and also of, uh, you know, it's that waning sun energy. That's the celebration between, uh, it's right before um, Salvin, which is Halloween. So it's about, uh, it's that equal point uh, halfway between, oh no, it's actually the equinox. So, so it's that half day and half night. And so what we did for that one was we made a list of all the things that we wanted to cultivate in our lives and then for each thing on that list we had to make another list of a quality or something that we wanted to let go of in our lives to balance that it's because if we want to cultivate something new we need to let go of something old uh, and then we just imbued a, a glass of water with the intentions we wanted to release dump that out in the earth and then uh, had another glass of water that we put in the intentions of the things that we wanted to cultivate and we drank that to to bring that energy into us so, you know, when I say the word magic here, uh, there's no goats or anything involved. Uh, we don't have to uh, go chant and drum and dance naked outside, although by all means, if that uh, calls to you, have fun. Um, but we just use simple ways to harness the energy of whatever is going on at the time and to work with it to help our lives. Um, for... Uh, for in bulk, I think it was we uh, we had seeds that we just you know uh, created and then imbued energy into it and then you know planted in the earth somewhere so that we're putting we're putting our intentions into literal fertile soil so that they can can grow and blossom. So you know, with a lot of it's energetic and symbolic. There's nothing you know crazy going on there, um, but it's usually some really beautiful energy and. And just ways to really start to bring in some empowerment and I don't really like the word control but active participation into your own life and the energies around you so um, yeah uh, we're doing those right now it's just still on zoom uh, because it's a little hard to uh, some things we've started doing in person and on zoom but the the ceremonies are a little bit difficult to um, to kind of split those. Uh, so we're just keeping it on Zoom for now. Um, still brings in some really beautiful energy and I give you a little warning beforehand uh, of the supplies that you'll need. They're always just simple things that you're gonna have around, you know, a pen and piece of paper, glass of water, or, you know, a piece of paper and a candle. Um, you know, there's, uh, I try to always make it something that you're, that you're gonna have, that you'll be able to grab easily. Um, because the other thing I always like to, to put a little emphasis on is the fact that uh, magic does not have to be a huge production and full of fancy tools and complicated processes. You know, magic can be a very simple but very useful and powerful thing. And I mean, sure, if we have the bells and whistles and the time and the group and, and, the, and the whole three ring circus to do, great. I mean, that's awesome and, and a lot of fun. And, and does it add more power? Sure, by all means. But there is no reason that we can't be actively using magic in our everyday lives with simple things that we have around us as long as our intention is strong and pure and our our desire is really clear and really powerful. So I think those are all the important things that I wanted to say. I am happy to uh, answer any questions if anybody has any at this point. I'm not sure. I don't know how to look and see who or if anyone we have watching. But um, 
If we don't have any questions, then I will uh, close and just say, you know, I hope that we can maybe see you at the Ostara ceremony, the Wheel of the Year workshop, we're calling it, uh, for Ostara, which is this uh, next Friday, March 19th at 8 p.m. And, and that's really about it. So I hope that this was helpful and informative for you. And I look forward to hopefully seeing you here soon. Have a wonderful night and take care. Bye now.